Hi guys, I'm your host from Hairsite.com, one of the world's largest and longest running websites for hair restoration. Today's video is produced in collaboration with Dr. John Cole's Hair Clinic in Atlanta, a top-ranked hair clinic on Hairsite with over 10 years of uninterrupted patient records. Today's topic is finasteride, a tiny blue pill that many of us are taking for hair loss. Finasteride also goes by the brand name Propecia. It is presently the only hair loss pill approved by the FDA for the treatment of male pattern baldness. We're not going to get into the efficiency of finasteride for hair loss here. Instead, we're going to talk about the safety issues of finasteride as it pertains to prostate cancer. This is a must-watch video for anyone using finasteride or considering using it for hair loss or other conditions. The first study I'm going to quote here is a research funded by the National Cancer Institute. The 10-year trial, involving nearly 19,000 participants nationwide, ended in 2003 with a very contradictory conclusion, which you should all find interesting. The trial data shows that despite the fact that men taking finasteride had fewer prostate cancers overall, they had a greater proportion of high-grade prostate cancers. By the close of the study, prostate cancer had been reported in about 18% of the men who took finasteride, compared to 24% of the men who took placebo. Despite the fact that men taking finasteride had fewer prostate cancers overall, they had a greater proportion of high-grade prostate cancers. Overall, 6.4% of men on finasteride had high-grade tumors, compared to only 5.1% in the placebo group. Recently, more on the subject has emerged, thanks to a follow-up study that lasted up to 18 years, involving the original trial participants. The follow-up study was also funded by the National Cancer Institute and it showed that finasteride reduced the risk of prostate cancer by about one-third in the long run. Although high-grade prostate cancer was more common in the finasteride group than in the placebo group, but after 18 years of follow-up, there was no significant difference in the overall survival rates for both groups. Here's a slide for those who are interested in digging into the numbers and statistics. We started with nearly 19,000 participants in the original study. Prostate cancer was diagnosed in 989, or 10.5% in the finasteride group, versus 1,412, or 14.9% in the placebo group. Of the men who were evaluated, 3.5% in the finasteride group versus 3% in the placebo group had high-grade cancer. Of the men who died, 2,538 were in the finasteride group versus 2,496 in the placebo group for a 15-year survival rates of 78% and 78.2% respectively. 10-year survival rates were 83% in the finasteride group versus 80.9% in the placebo group for men with low-grade prostate cancer and 73% versus 73.6% respectively for those with high-grade prostate cancer. Some people may consider these results encouraging because they raise possibility that finasteride use may potentially reduce prostate cancer risk long-term. Some researchers even suggest that the drug may have a benefit that lasts long after men stop taking it. However, that's not to say that you should go get a script for finasteride right away. These trial data are by no means conclusive evidence that finasteride can indeed lower prostate cancer risks for all men. As with all medications, there are risks and side effects involved. It's very important that you discuss these trial data with your doctor before making a decision. And for those who don't want to mess with medications and potential side effects, there are other options for hair loss, such as platelet-rich plasma hair therapy and even hair transplant procedures. There are many choices out there. Finasteride is not the only answer for hair loss. To learn more about this topic or to speak to a specialist about your condition, contact Dr. Cole's Hair Clinic for a free consultation. No cost, no fee. Just good, honest information from a reputable and top-ranked clinic on Hairsite.